everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, Tuesday was an incredibly tough day for Hopkins County and area firefighters as they were dispatched to four different structure fires in the span of about 12 hours. One of the blazes included a disabled resident still unaccounted for as of Wednesday morning. Hopkins County emergency dispatchers were contacted at 2.43 p.m. on Tuesday about a house fire on County Road 3608 in Sulphur Bluff. Hopkins County, Sulphur Bluff, Saltillo, Dyke, Brinker, Franklin County, Arbela, and North Hopkins firefighters all responded. They soon received information that there could possibly be a handicapped person inside of the home. Firefighters on the scene reported that the home was fully involved in fire when they arrived. Firefighters used hand lines to try to knock the fire down, but were hampered by the problem of getting their tanker trucks to water supplies. The structure was declared a total loss, according to Hopkins County Fire Marshal Michael Matthews. One resident of the home was thought to be at work, and the other thought to be at home. Fire officials reportedly searched throughout the night, but the missing resident remained unaccounted for. Fire officials said that they would return Wednesday morning. Earlier in the day, firefighters from Hopkins County, Tyra, North Hopkins, and Peerless were dispatched to a fire in a uh, county road 4779 double wide mobile home that started in a living room uh, just before 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Firefighters knocked down the fire quickly, containing damage to the area of origin. The home did have significant smoke damage, and cause of the fire is thought to be due to an electrical short. The Red Cross showed up to help residents of that home. A third structure uh, was reported to firefighters at 7.12 p.m. Tuesday in a shed on uh, County Road 1136 in Miller Grove. Units from Hopkins County, Arbela, Cumbie, and Miller Grove all responded, and the fire was reported out by 8.06 p.m. Fourth fire was reported at around 11 p.m. This was a house fire on FM 1870. No one was said to be at home at the time of the fire. Firefighters from Hopkins County, Brinker, Como, and Arbela all responded. Flames were showing when firefighters arrived. Fire officials reported a good stop to that fire, but firefighters did remain at the scene until 2.40 a.m. Uh, on uh, Wednesday. Cause of that fire undetermined pending an investigation. An incredibly busy day for Hopkins County and area firefighters. Wreaths Across America is an annual campaign to place a holiday wreath on the grave of veterans all across our nation. In fact, Hopkins County has a campaign with three cemeteries taking part. If you would like to donate a wreath for $15 or sponsor a wreath, you can do so. Let's find out more from organizer Dina Lloyd. The passion, I guess, comes from um, having a son in the military. And as you know, um, my why is when Chad was overseas and in Baghdad serving in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, there were times that he were, was able to come home uh, for his leave. And so you would go to these homecomings, and I can remember vividly attending one at Fort Hood, and the, all the soldiers that are uh, have been deployed are coming in, and they're standing at attention, and then they break and let them meet their families. And there's just such a just such a potpourri of emotions. I mean, you're just so excited, you're relieved, you're happy, you're just beyond. It's just ecstatic. And so having that, and then in 2006, when Chad was killed by an IED, the emotions t took the other end of the spectrum. Um, we were numb, of course, and but it was the outpouring 
of the community spirit for us. They showed their support. We had two young girls in our neighborhood who went throughout and decorated in a patriotic spirit. I mean, hmm. people lined the streets the day of Chad's funeral. It was 105 degrees that day, and people lined the streets with their flags. The, just the outpouring of patriotism and support and love from our community um, just spurred me on. Um, also, after his death, we attended several uh, memorial ceremonies at Fort Hood. And there was one particular one that really just touched me. I guess you could say that was my defining moment. The grief in the air was so heavy. It was like a true burden on all of our shoulders. And that's when it really, really hit me that... Our freedoms here in America that we take for granted so often are truly, truly purchased by the lives of our fallen soldiers and our veterans. And that's when that passion with Wreaths Across America was a spark for me. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't hear about it at that time, but it was a couple of years later. And I saw this again, and it was like, I want to do this for <laughs> the city cemetery. And you did. City Cemetery and Mel Haven last year were covered, completely covered, in the search for veterans' graves, locations of veterans' graves, although there is a list of everyone that is buried in those cemeteries. But the veterans, we just had to locate and mark each one for this ceremony. Right. What we did is thank you, thank you to James and Anita Jones because they have the, the ongoing list of the veterans that um, are buried at the city cemetery and Melhaven. And with that list, we were able to compile uh, to gather up a list of all the veterans that we wanted to or that we could honor and I want to intercept this right here um, there are some veterans that are buried at the city cemetery and Melhaven who do not have a government marker right. if they do not have a government marker please contact me we can double check with our database to ensure that that veteran gets a wreath and that their name is um, their name is spoken on the day of our ceremony this is true. Some veterans do not have the marker mm -hmm. that our government does provide. And so uh, this is what we were primarily going by, is that correct? And right. other records. Right, okay. their records uh, and, and the VA markers. But some, like I said, a lot of, there are some. And that's why we changed our goal. Last year our goal was 600. This year we increased our goal to 700. And um, we did that because I do feel like there are some there that were not... Um, we didn't celebrate their life last year because okay. we didn't know. Okay. So I just asked for the public to reach out to me or your audience to reach out to me. And if they have a um, loved one or they know of someone that does not have a cemetery, a veterans marker, to let me know. And this would be in City Cemetery At or the City Haven. Cemetery or Mel Haven. Because <laughs> this is as far as we have gone so far. Except for Black Oak. Someone is doing Black Oak Yes, this year. yes. I'm so excited to, to announce that Loretta Scott volunteered to be the location coordinator for the Black Oak Cemetery. So we do have another local cemetery participating. Black Oak has 71 veterans, and the monies have been donated so far for 24 wreaths. So she still is needing sponsors for 41 wreaths, and I can, we can give you her contact number if you want me to air that, mm -hmm. okay. Loretta Scott's phone number is 903-307-9000. Okay. And you can contact her to make a donation for the Black Oak Cemetery. How wonderful that our community cemeteries, someone is coming forward gradually as, as we go through. Right. So December 14th, Saturday, December 14th is the date for... Wreaths Across America in City Cemetery and Melhaven. Mm -hmm. At Sulphur Springs, we'll have our opening ceremony, a short, brief ceremony, and then we will uh, commence with the uh, laying of the wreaths. I also wanted to mention that the Civil Air Patrol has joined me in the efforts of fundraising this year. That is one of their fundraisers, and so they will uh, be participating in our ceremony and posting our colors, and then we'll uh, commence to lay the wreaths as well.
Last year, so many people volunteered to take some wreaths out, and there was a certain mark of color of a streamer there mm-hmm. uh, where you could lay the wreath and find that grave. Right. And what what just amazed me and, and strengthened me on that was there were so many young people high school and college age that were vigorous and energetic and wanted to get out there carried lots of wreaths way out to the right corners to the corners of the cemetery <laughs> where there's where there's veterans buried and i encourage the same thing this year last year we did have the key club to volunteer and assist us and i encourage if there's an organization or a civic group or even just parents that want to bring. I had a lot of parents that brought their children out last year. And, I mean, that is just, it's a huge history lesson. It and is. it's it's to, to help to teach our children what patriotism is about and about the sacrifices of our veterans. And as your uh, mission statement says, you're on a mission to remember, honor, and teach. Yes, and the motto this year is to play a part by sponsoring a wreath to be placed on the headstones. And in saying that, I wanted to say that the moving force behind Wreaths Across America is truly the volunteers. And that is from the trucking companies and the truck drivers who deliver wreaths all across the United States to for free at no cost to us. And this year we have over 17,000 cemeteries participating um, in the Wreaths Across America in conjunction with the Wreaths Across America ceremony at okay. Arlington. But it truly is volunteers, and it, like I said, it goes from the truck drivers all the way down to the small child who is placing the wreath on the <laughs> headstone, stepping back, saying their name to honor them, and giving them a, a time of remembrance. Um, Last year, my co-parts were uh, Staff Sergeant James Bounds Mm -hmm. and Yori Frankly, and they did a phenomenal job of organizing and planning my last year's event. Uh, I mentioned James and Anita Jones. Of course, I could not do this without my husband. Jimmy is so good to give me the encouragement and the support that I need to pursue this. Um, Let's see who else. The ones who distributed the wreaths. I had many people... um, to come, like you said, and, and just volunteer their time. Um, it's if anybody wants to to do or to donate or to volunteer, they can contact me at 903-348-8174. To donate or volunteer. Uh, contact Dina Lloyd at that number, 348-8174. And I, go ahead. There is a way that they can help. If they can't volunteer or can't be there, they can help with just writing a check. Right. Writing a check is, is playing a part and not... Um, and that's $15, is $15 right? for one wreath. For every two wreaths, for every two wreaths that are purchased... Wreaths Across America donates a third wreath. Okay. So we actually are getting three wreaths for okay. $30. Okay. So, so if, if you would like to participate by sponsoring a wreath, then you could do it for $15, or you could do it for $30 and get three wreaths right. to be placed. Right. And, and it's, we, it's, it's, it's very touching because whoever does the placements, and there are volunteers all in the cemetery after... After the, it is over and says it's time for us to go out there, those words are said over each grave. Right. Exactly. Personally. We went to honor them. Yes, because there's a quote that is so that stays in the back of my mind a lot that um, a person actually dies twice. The first time they pass away and people acknowledge their death and say their name. And then later on, when their name is said for the last time, we don't want to do that. We will never forget. And that is one of Reese Across America's mission is we will never forget. It's very touching. It's well, touching when the ceremony takes place and it's touching even talking about it today. But you are brave and you you have a lot of sadness still over the loss of your son and thinking of all the other soldiers right. and families who have lost their loved right. ones. And this is a way that you that you can help. Right. And I can, we can keep their memories alive, their lives, their sacrifice, their dedication. Uh, I'm grateful I was raised in a patriotic home. 
but I think we can take patriotism to the next level. And I'm, you know, in the wreaths, the wreaths are a live balsam fir, and then they're adorned with a handmade red ribbon. They're just beautiful, they're beautiful and fragrant. And the mm-hmm. fragrance, the fragrance <laughs> was phenomenal. They come in large boxes. They're placed by these uh, truckers, truck drivers, at certain points of the cemetery. Right. And from there the distribution goes out. Right. And that's where Yori Franklin did a phenomenal job <laughs> organizing and planning and telling people where to go. Um, she was just so good at helping with that. There was one other thing I wanted to say about this um, and how it really started. Let me just give people a, l- a little history of Reese Across America. We have about three minutes. Um, it started with a man who had access, who had visited uh, Arlington vis- Cemetery as a child, and he's a wreath maker for Christmas, and he, one year, 1992, he had an abundance of wreaths left over, and he realized um, our nation's values and the ultimate sacrifice the veterans have made, so he donated the rest, his excesses of wreaths to Arlington National Cemetery, and he did this for several years, and then in 2005, it was the iconic picture that is so famous of the fresh wreath with the red bow and the snow laying up against the headstone in Arlington National Cemetery. And that is when the spirit just, it blossomed and volunteers started coming forth saying we would like to do this. And so Reese Across America was born. And then um, now, like I said, we're going to be doing it over 17,000 cemeteries across the United States. Including in Sulphur Springs. Including Sulphur Springs. Our city cemetery and Mel Haven, which are adjoining. Right. And also one out at Black Oak Cemetery. And that's yes. That's wonderful for us. Yes. None of this would have happened if you had not been moved sometime during last year, in 2018, this idea just got on your heart. It's just, you know, I saw it on TV and the uh, Dallas stations. Um, FEC, Farmers Electric Co-op. Yes. They are oh, they are so awesome to support this. And every year in their November magazine, they do uh, have an article or something about Reese Across America. And the November issue, if you have it, it has a holiday uh, pie on the front. But this lady, Ellen Fuller, has you've been working with her. Right. She's a mentor to she you. She is my mentor. And Absolutely. she is on the National Board of Reese yes, Across yes. America. Yes, yes. She, she was awesome last year to help me and guide me through all of this and doing the same. Thank you, Dina Lloyd. Thank you, Enola, for having me. Please have people contact me if they have any questions. In sports, two senior Wildcats basketball players signed letters of intent Wednesday morning with uh, college basketball programs. Cameron Kahn signed with Dallas Baptist University and Sedadrian Dayday Hall signed with Indiana University, Purdue in, uh, University, Indianapolis. That's all one college. I talked with uh, Cameron Kahn and then with Dayday Hall. It was through it was through AAU basketball and uh, they just following me and it just helps it just helps me to be there because it can help me follow my faith and also become a better man. Uh, what kind of team do they have? How have they been? Their team they're two and zero right now to start and they just they play with each other and they play and they love the game and they all talk and communicate and they want they want to win and I love winners. Now at your size, uh, you could probably play multiple positions. What's their their goal for you? Uh, their goal for me is to help them push the ball, play around, be versatile, and be the best I can be. That's all they ask for. All right. You looking forward to a good year? Yes, sir, I am. All right. And uh, so uh, has it, this recruiting thing, was it about what you expected? Or? Uh, this recruiting thing was pretty overwhelming because there was coaches there, then there wasn't coaches there, but DBU stuck. And they always been that one for me. Yeah. So you feel like this is a real good match for you? Yes, sir, it is. Not too far from home? Not too far from my granny can get there, and family and friends can show up too. Congratulations. We're proud of you. Thank you. All right. All right, Day Day. Yes, sir, how you doing? Now, you're going to Alphabet Soup, looks like. Uh, <laughs> yes, how did sir. you get uh, all the way to Indiana? Uh, so me and Cameron's working out this coach, uh, Coach Burden. And he always said, when I get my new job, I'm going to come back and get you. Got hired at IPU. I mean, IUPUI, uh-huh. that's a mouthful, but uh, he said, I'm going to come back and get you. And he came back to get me. Yeah. So I was waiting on his dream and was signed there. All right. Uh, so uh, how uh, how are they as a team? Uh, they're, they're solid, very solid. Uh, I, they're there to win. Feels like Silver Springs all over again. Uh-huh. So it's just like a home environment for me. Yeah. What about you did they like? I uh, like how I play. Like, it like 
my skills, and like what I do on the court as a player. Are they impressed with your rebounding for your size? Oh yes, sir, absolutely. They said uh, one of the best rebounds they got in a defender. That's a special knack. Yes, sir. If you got it, I don't know how you do it. You got there. We got to put hard effort into it. Yeah. Uh, what are their role? What's the role that they see for you on the team? Uh, my role first year, I'll be a forward. But after that, I'll be the uh, guard. And I'll kind of be the guy after that my sophomore year. Think you can start right away? Uh, it's going to take time. So I'll probably come off the bench a little bit, but I think I can. What do you think about recruiting? How did it go for you? Uh, it actually went really well. Been like undersized big. Uh, like got overlooked by some big schools, but at the end, I think it paid off. And you like this uh, matchup? Cold up there, but uh, it's cold today, right? Yes, sir. I'm used to it. I get used to it. Whatever it takes. All right. Not too cold in the gym. No, sir. Uh, yeah, kind of cold because the door is around, but not too cold. What's uh, your thoughts on this year's season for the Wildcats? Uh, this team is like what well, I think is we have a better chance to win the state this year than last year. Full team can shoot. We play faster. And we got more chemistry than we had last year. I think it would be a good uh, good run for state this year. Well, best of luck in college. Thank you. Thank you. Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta also talked about Con and Hall. You know, this is a, a, a big-time uh, kid for us. Not just a basketball player, but a great character. And I know at uh, Dallas Baptist, um, he's going to get fed spiritually, uh, mentally, and physically. Um, so I think it's the perfect fit for him, Coach Fleck, and those guys are just really good people. So, uh, man, we're really proud of him. I um, mean, he brings so much to the table. He was a, uh, We appreciate all the schools that recruited him. He had a ton of uh, interests and offers, and uh, he's just such a versatile kid. And uh, a lot of people don't know he's really only 17 years old, so he really should be a junior this year. Um, so he's just – the sky's the limit for him as far as potential. And you're going to look up in two and three years, and he's going to be a, a whole different type of player and a kid. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're excited to see what he's going to do. And I'm glad he's close to home. Uh, Day Day's going to Indiana on me. Uh, so it'll be harder to watch him. But Cam will be in our backyard um, at times. So, uh, you know, just, um, you know, we're just really grateful. Uh, not, not a lot of programs, not a lot of coaches get to have kids go play college basketball. And we've been fortunate to have quite a bit these last few years. And he's as special as anyone that's come through. What about Day Day? I know that's mm -hmm. special for you. It is, you know. That day day's a kid that uh, me and my family have taken in the last two years who's lived with us and it's really family um so you know just seeing him make it is uh it's, it's pretty cool uh you know he's a, a great kid and um just a great uh and he's just gonna do good things and we're, we're really happy for him and uh you know i think indiana's far enough i don't have to whoop his butt uh where i can't just drive up there and whoop it so he knew what he was doing when he went and uh, once again I think that's a program, uh, Coach Burton and their uh, staff. I'm um, really going to take care of him, and he's going to be in good hands there as well. I kidded him about being such a good rebounder for his size. Right. Yeah. He's uh, he's incredible. He has a he's the we call him a magnet towards the basketball. Uh, I, I get on him all the time. Sometimes he doesn't block out, but he still ends up getting rebounds, and it's just one of those things you can't describe it. He just has a nose for basketball, and unlike really any kid I've ever seen. Uh, He's probably the best rebounder I've ever coached and probably will coach for a very long time. And, uh, and he's, he holds the scoring record here. I don't know if many people know that. Holds the scoring record here uh, and the all-time rebounding record uh, with 38 points and 22 rebounds, which he got against uh, Wilson last year. Um, so uh, just an incredible kid. The, the crazy thing about him is he's very unselfish. You would think a kid with that much talent um, would want the ball all the time and complain when uh, you know, you're know you not running plays for him. But he really doesn't. I have to tell him to score more often than I have to tell him to pass. So uh, just a very unselfish that speaks a lot about his character um, as well. And um, he's one of those kids that has a different gear. Um, not all of our kids have that. Um, and we call him a dog because <laughs> he, he is. Uh, he, he's not going to back down from anybody. And he's one of those kids that can really turn it up um, at that time uh, when needed. And uh, we, we definitely are going to need that this year. We may see more of these. Um, yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, we got some kids like a Grayson and a Brock who, who might have a chance to get recruited if they have a good year. Uh, we've been sending a lot of stuff out on those guys and um, just really solid basketball players. And um, I know I got some kids coming uh, that are definitely they're, they're, they're wanting to play college basketball. I think they'll have an opportunity to. So hopefully each year, man, we could put somebody, you know, from Sulphur Springs um, in a college program to continue to play basketball. That, that, that would be a good uh, um, 
goal of mine for sure. The Wildcats basketball team had their second and last scrimmage Tuesday night against hosts Mesquite Poteet and Tyler Lee. Again, we hear from Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta. So we played really uh, well uh, at times, uh, much better than Saturday. Uh, Saturday we just it almost looked like we weren't having fun Saturday. Um, I know we have a big target on our back, and we're going to get everybody's best. And um, the team's not really – they didn't handle that really well. So any adversity really hurt them. And, you know, they, they almost took it personal when uh, things weren't going our way. And in a game of basketball, you and I both know that things aren't going to go our way all the time. And good teams find a way to overcome that. And I thought uh, in yesterday's scrimmage we found a way to overcome that. We had one bad quarter. Uh, we returned the ball over a lot, but um, th the great thing was we made some adjustments and they responded to those adjustments, and I saw them having fun on the court. Um, you know, proud of one another, celebrating other teammates' success, and, and like I said, just having fun. They're still kids, and we got to keep that stuff into perspective, so um, we're definitely thankful. Whew. Cameron played a lot better. Um, I really challenged Cameron. Um, he, didn't, he didn't play up to what I needed him to play like Saturday, and I let him know about it, and it really challenged him. To, to play better. Um, Boo, Boo was a big key for us. Um, he had a few careless turnovers Saturday and really focused on Helen the ball. Um, LJ's a little beat up. He didn't play a whole lot. His ankle um, is bothering him. Um, he played a little bit. It looked well. Um, Grayson shot it good. Day Day gave us what we know Day Day's going to give us. Um, I'll tell you who really stood out. Uh, another one, the hair kid, Justin Hare. Um, he played really, really well. Uh, Saturday, he missed a lot around the rim and brought the ball down and just some uncharacteristic stuff. And he really fixed that uh, yesterday. He had a couple of putback dunks. Um, he scored some offensive rebounds. And um, he, he looked like the game was slower to him. He was really sped up uh, Saturday. And he was more calm and more poised um, when he had the ball in his hands uh, uh, yesterday. So. Last question, are you ready for Decatur? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I need two more days. <laughs> Two more days. They're really good. Um, they, they're in mid-season form right now. They, uh, they move the ball well. They, they run a lot of actions. Um, they're really tough to guard. And we really got to prep to uh, not let their shooters get open looks and, and really, um, really press in hard to, to stop them because um, it's going to be very challenging. But, uh, you know, after hopefully in two days uh, I can answer that question of yes. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to playing. Um, you know, the, the Cowtown Showdown is one of the top events um, that we go to, and, uh, you know, we're blessed to be able to go each year, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good show. The Lady Cats basketball team got too far behind in a cold first quarter at Mount Vernon Tuesday night and could not catch up in a 46-29 loss. The Lady Cats 0-2 for this season begin play in a Bells Invitational Tournament on Thursday morning. And I talked with Lady Cats basketball coach Brittany Tisdale Wednesday morning. Got down too much in the first quarter. It was 18-5 to 5 in the first quarter, and um, we just couldn't come back from it uh, at that point. Um, but after the first quarter, we played outstanding. So if we uh, hadn't gotten so down in the first quarter, I think we would have won it. A pretty good team uh, from Mount Vernon. That big girl inside was a lot to handle. Oh, yeah. That was a move in, so um, oh, wow. didn't expect her. Wasn't ready for her. Um, she, I don't know how they got her. I guess she heard state tournament team, and she <laughs> moved in there. So they got them a good one with that move in. Yeah. And uh, you had a big night for a couple, from a couple of freshmen that scored a lot of points, Lewis and also Willis. Oh, yeah. They... Um, Lewis and um, Willis combined scored 24 of our 29 points. Yeah. So two, two standouts in freshmen, yeah. Yeah, we kind of expected some of that, I guess, but I guess jitters in that first game, but uh, really came on in the second. Yeah, they looked a lot more comfortable, um, and they're getting more used to the varsity pace. It's a big jump to go straight from junior high into a varsity pace game, so um, they're doing a good job, and we'll get there eventually. Yeah, it's just uh, some of the shots wouldn't fall last night, and, and you know, so some of those things will kind of iron themselves out with more practice and everything. 
Yeah, they'll get more comfortable um, just shooting and not rushing their shot, not pushing it, um, things like that. Just little things that, you know, Val Vernon is a seasoned team that they walk out there and that's nothing new to them. So um, they were making everything and we weren't making much. So uh, it, they'll get they'll get better with we're putting up points. And now you've got a tournament. You get a lot of chance to play a lot of games over a, a few days, and, uh, and that'll help, right? Oh, yeah. We'll start with another ranked team with Pottsboro, <laughs> and then um, we'll go from there. But, uh, yeah, it's a good tournament. I put I put a lot of challenging things on the um, schedule. So, yeah, 9 a.m., we're starting with Pottsboro t uh, tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. For an opening season game, the Saltillo Lady Lions decided to climb the highest mountain. They took on Martins Mill, the number one ranked team in Class 2A and state champions for the past two seasons on Tuesday, and the game was in Martins Mill. The result was a Martins Mill win over Saltillo, 53-18. Martins Mill went up 19-2 after one quarter and never looked back. For the Lady Lions, Allie Lane had six points. Chandler Bain and Joshuan, uh, Jocelyn Ochoa had four points apiece, and Anna Reeder and Maddie Smith had two points each. Lady Lions coach Bill Giles said his team was a little overwhelmed, but he added it was their first game and they would learn from this. The Lady Lions play next in the Rivercrest Shootout on Saturday. And that's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everybody.